Have you ever wondered if you can convert plastic waste into petrol at home? It's an intriguing concept, isn't it? With the growing environmental concerns around plastic waste, it's a question that's piqued scientific and public interest alike. And yes, technically it is possible to convert plastic into petrol. However, before we get too excited, let's take a step back and think about the realities of this process. It's not as simple as tossing a plastic bottle into a magic machine and watching petrol come out the other end. The process is complex, requiring specialized equipment, a deep understanding of chemical reactions, and a healthy respect for safety protocols. So, while the idea of turning that plastic waste into something useful like petrol might sound appealing, the truth is it's not a feasible DIY project. While it's technically possible to create petrol from plastic, this isn't something you can do in your kitchen or garage. Before any conversion can take place, the plastic waste must be sorted and prepared. This is a crucial initial stage as different types of plastic require distinct processing methods. The first step is to meticulously segregate the plastic by polymer type. This might seem like a daunting task, but it's essential for the subsequent chemical reactions to proceed correctly. Next comes the cleaning and pretreatment stage. This involves a thorough cleaning of the segregated plastic to remove any impurities that might affect the conversion process. It's a little like prepping your vegetables before cooking. You wouldn't want any dirt or grime to spoil your meal, would you? After cleaning, the plastic typically undergoes shredding and drying. This is akin to chopping up your vegetables into smaller pieces and drying them out, making them ready for the next step in the cooking process. After meticulous sorting and preparation, the plastic is ready for the next phase. The heart of the process lies in chemical conversion. This is where the magic happens, transforming everyday plastic into something much more valuable, petrol. But it's no simple sleight of hand. It's a series of complicated chemical reactions that take place in a controlled environment, guided by expert hands. Our first step is pyrolysis. This is a fancy term for heating plastic in the absence of oxygen. Think of it as plastic undergoing a high heat sauna session. As the temperature rises, the long polymer chains in the plastic break down into smaller molecules. These molecules are known as hydrocarbons, the building blocks of petrol, but we're not done yet. These hydrocarbons aren't quite ready to fuel your car. They still contain unwanted oxygen. This is where deoxygenation comes in. Through additional chemical processes like hydrogenation or hydrocracking, we remove this excess oxygen. It's like giving the hydrocarbons a thorough cleanse, stripping away impurities and leaving behind a cleaner, more refined product. Our final step in the chemical conversion is reforming. This is where we get a little creative, tweaking and restructuring the hydrocarbon molecules to create gasoline-like compounds. With the help of a catalyst, the hydrocarbons undergo a makeover, transforming into compounds that have the right properties to work as petrol. This process is like a complex dance, each step meticulously choreographed and performed with precision. It's not something you can whip up in your backyard. It requires specialized knowledge, careful control of conditions, and of course, some pretty serious equipment. Once the chemical conversion is complete, the resulting product is closer to petrol but it's not there yet. The hydrocarbons have been broken down, cleaned up, and restructured, but they still need a bit of refining. That's where our next stage, purification and separation, comes into play. But that's a story for another scene. For now, let's bask in the marvel that is chemical conversion, the heart of the process that turns plastic into petrol. The next step in the journey is purification and separation. After the chemical conversion process, the reformed hydrocarbons are not yet in a usable state. They contain a variety of compounds, some of which are not suitable for use as fuel. This is where distillation comes into play. Distillation is a process that separates the mixture into different fractions based on their boiling points. The fractions that boil at temperatures similar to petrol are isolated, leaving behind other components. But even this separated fraction isn't pure petrol just yet. It may still contain impurities that need to be removed. This is where the final stage of purification comes in. Various methods can be used to cleanse the separated fraction of any remaining impurities. 
This might involve additional chemical reactions, filtration processes, or other cleaning techniques. Only after these rigorous purification and separation steps can we say, with purification and separation complete, the converted plastic is now in a form similar to petrol. Converting plastic waste into petrol isn't without its challenges and considerations. It's a process that requires a considerable amount of energy and specialized resources. The machinery, the chemicals, the safety protocols, it all adds up, making it a venture that's currently only viable on a commercial scale with the right infrastructure. But it's not just about the resources. There are environmental considerations as well. Even though this process can help reduce landfill waste by turning plastic into fuel, it's not entirely clean. The chemical reactions can produce emissions and byproducts that need to be managed properly to minimize their environmental impact. Safety is also a crucial aspect to consider. Remember, we're talking about chemical reactions and flammable materials. These elements carry inherent risks and demand strict safety protocols and regulations. So, it's not something you'd casually undertake in your backyard. Given these challenges, it's clear that converting plastic waste into petrol is not a practical solution for most individuals or households. But don't be disheartened. There are other, more accessible ways to manage plastic waste. One such alternative is mechanical recycling. This is a well-established process that turns plastic waste directly into new products. It reduces waste, conserves resources, and is something that most of us can participate in through our local recycling programs. Another promising option is chemical upcycling. This process converts plastics into other valuable chemicals, like lubricants or building blocks for new materials. It's an area of ongoing research and development. And while it may not be readily available for individuals right now, it offers a glimpse of what future waste management might look like. Though the idea of converting plastic waste into petrol is intriguing, for now, the most practical approach for individuals remains recycling and exploring alternative upcycling options. Let's continue to do our part in managing plastic waste responsibly and keep an eye on the horizon for new and innovative solutions.